gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. May we see you and hear you today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Is my microphone working? Okay, okay. I got an indication earlier that it may not be working, so I just wanted to make sure. As you look at the title of the message today, it may be familiar to you. Do you hear what I hear? Does that remind anybody of anything? Christmas. A Christmas song. Well, wait a minute. It's Easter season, not the Christmas season. You may remember that song. I always associate that song with Andy Williams and his Christmas specials, and I can just hear and see him singing that uh, today. Do you hear what I hear? But as I said, it's, it's Easter, but Easter is a time that we need to be hearing as well. Now, I thought about another title for the sermon today, and maybe we could see that up on the screen. I know that you believe, you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. <laughs> but that's too long. So I went with, do you hear what I hear? But I think both of those titles remind us how difficult it is to really hear what someone is saying. Communication can be very difficult, and we may think we have heard what somebody has said, but we don't always hear what is said. There may be certain things that we simply find it difficult to listen to. There may be certain things that we find it difficult to hear, and so we don't hear sometimes. We have two passages today that tell us a little bit about hearing and not hearing. The passage that Susan has read for us from John's Gospel tells us of Jesus being in Jerusalem. He was teaching at the temple and he got a question. Some Jews had gathered and they said, are you the Messiah? If you are, just tell us plainly so that we know. And Jesus responded, I did. I have. I've told you. You're just not believing it. And he goes on to say, don't believe just my words, but look at the things that I have done, the works that I have done in my Father's name. He's trying to tell them again who he is. And he concludes by saying, I and the Father are one. In other words, I'm telling you that I am the Messiah. We are the same, my Father and me. We are one. I am the Messiah. Now, if we read just one more verse in that chapter, we would read that those who were gathered there, the Jews, then bent down and picked up stones to kill him. So they wanted to know whether or not he was the Messiah, but when he tried to tell them in no uncertain terms that he was, what was their response? Kill him. You can't say that. You can't be that person. They really did not want to hear what Jesus had to say. But Jesus had already mentioned that because he said, you know, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. If you can't hear me, it's not because I'm not saying anything. I am. And my sheep are hearing me and they will follow. There clearly were people at the time that didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. They were unable to hear what Jesus had to say. Sometimes we bring assumptions. Sometimes we bring predispositions along with us. And when we hear somebody say something, we can reject it because it doesn't fit in with those things that we bring with us. And so we can't hear. And yet Jesus was saying, there are some who are hearing my voice. And they are following me. 
Well, what about this passage we have heard from the book of Acts? We read of Peter being called to a little city called Joppa, which was out on the Mediterranean coast. And he was called there by some of his disciples because something had happened in Joppa. Tabitha had died. Now, who was Tabitha? Well, she is called a disciple. And it's interesting to note that that is the only time in the entire New Testament that the feminine form of the word disciple is used. The only time in the entire New Testament. So Tabitha was special. Tabitha was a disciple, and Tabitha helped the poor. She made clothing for widows. She did all kinds of things to support the people who needed help. And she was a disciple. It was a terrible thing in Joppa when Tabitha died. There were some other disciples there who knew that Peter was not far away, and they said, go get Peter. And so when some disciples appeared and simply said, you need to come with us right now, Peter went. And he went to Joppa. He was led upstairs to the room where Tabitha had been placed. And he sent everybody else out of the room. All the others who had gathered there, the widows who were mourning, all the others Peter sent out of the room. And Peter got down on his knees and prayed. And as he was praying, he looked at Tabitha and simply said, Tabitha, get up. And she did. She sat up. She saw Peter. Peter extended his hand and helped her up. And we don't read this, but I think Peter must have said something like, Tabitha, Let's go show everybody else that you're not dead. You, in fact, are alive. Let's go show everybody else. And so they did. And that story of what Peter had done that day spread throughout Joppa. And we read that because of that, many others became believers. Now, as I said before I read the first scripture this morning, there are several cases of hearing that we read about in these two passages. We read of Jesus being near the temple and some Jews ask him a question and he heard their question and he responded. He could hear them, but unfortunately they couldn't really hear him. They couldn't get his response. They didn't like what they heard, even though he was simply answering their question. So we have, in this case, somebody who could hear, and we had some people who couldn't hear. In this passage that we read from Acts, we have people hearing as well. Peter heard the disciples when they came and said, you need to come with us now. He heard that, and he went. And Tabitha heard something. Tabitha was dead, but she heard Peter speak. And she was alive. Now, there's another combination of speakers and hearers that we need to consider for just a minute, and that is Peter and God. Because we read that after Peter had ask everybody else to get out of the room, he does what? He prays. He talks to God. Do you think God heard Peter? Yes. I believe God heard Peter. I believe God hears us when we pray. And I believe Peter heard God. Now, we don't know exactly what was included in Peter's prayer. We aren't told that bit of information. But I'm sure somewhere in what Peter was saying to God, he said, God, Tabitha's dead. You know what a disciple she is. You know all the good that she does. You know how she loves you. And something like, boy, it would be nice if she were still alive. Can you make that happen, God? And I can, I can imagine God saying, yes, I can, Peter. 
just ask her to get up. And so I think God was hearing Peter. I think Peter was hearing God. And when Peter spoke, I think Tabitha heard that, though she was dead. And because she heard, she was alive again. We hear things all day long, do we not? We hear stuff all the time. I think the world is noisier now than it has ever been. We are surrounded by noise all the time. We hear the radio, the TV, traffic, people talking, heavy equipment, all kinds of stuff. It's going on all around us. Perhaps we have been able to shut some of it out and we don't even hear it. But in the midst of all that noise that's going on around us, and by the way, much of that is people telling you, listen to me. They want you to hear them about all kinds of stuff. But in the midst of all that, I believe God also is speaking to us. But it sometimes is hard to hear, is it not? It sometimes is difficult in the midst of all this noise to hear God. Jesus said there were some people that could hear his voice and some people that just couldn't. Can we hear Jesus? Sometimes we may hear something and we may wonder, is this Jesus talking to me or not? We may find it difficult to decide, is it really Jesus speaking to me or is it somebody or something else that's trying to get my attention, trying to help me hear them? How do I decide if it's Jesus speaking to me? And I would say there are three fairly simple rules Number one, is what we are hearing reflective of the Jesus that we know? Now this kind of implies something. You have to know Jesus in order to answer that question. There are ways we can do that. There are ways we can get to know Jesus and we can do it more all the time. I don't think anybody ever gets to the point where they say, I know everything about Jesus. So we can continue to get to know Jesus all the time. And as we hear what we think is somebody speaking to us, the better we know Jesus, the better able we're going to be able to say, that sounds like Jesus. Now, Jesus tells us lots of different things. Sometimes Jesus will comfort us with words. Not everything Jesus says is comforting. Sometimes Jesus challenges us. Sometimes Jesus simply wants to say, I love you. So Jesus can say lots of different things. And in order to get a better idea if it's really Jesus speaking to us, we need to know Jesus. It doesn't happen overnight. The more we spend time with Jesus, the more we read about Jesus, the better we come to know him. If we want to know if it's Jesus speaking to us, we need to get to know Jesus. The second thing that helps us determine whether or not Jesus is speaking to us is whether or not what we're hearing seems to fit in with what we read about in Scripture. That also implies something. We need to know Scripture. And Scripture tells us a lot of different things. How do we do that? We read and we study and we pray about Scripture and we discuss it with other people and we get to know Scripture. And as we listen and try to determine whether or not it is Jesus talking to us, if we hear something and we can say, that seems to fit in with what I read about in Scripture, then that's going to help us decide, yes, that is Jesus speaking to me. And there's a third piece to this. Are we hearing something that spreads the good news and helps build the kingdom of God? If we're hearing something that is destructive, I would say that's not building the kingdom of God. We are called to build one another up, not to be destructive of one another. So if we're hearing something that sounds destructive, we could say 
That's not building up the kingdom. That's not what I'm used to reading about in Scripture. That doesn't sound like Jesus. And so as we apply those three rules of knowing Jesus, of knowing Scripture, and of asking, does this help spread the good news and build up the kingdom, I think that'll help us determine if what we're hearing is coming from Jesus. And if it is, then we can respond and say, thank you, Jesus, for speaking to me. And we can respond to whatever it is Jesus is telling us or asking us to do. And it could be lots of different things. I believe Jesus speaks to us. I believe he wants to have conversations with us. Not just in that few minutes that we can set aside for devotions in the morning or the evening. I think Jesus wants to talk to us through the day. And I think Jesus wants us to listen for what he is saying to us. In the midst of all that's going on around us, in the midst of the noise, I think Jesus is speaking to us and wants us to hear what he has to say. As you go through this week, stop every once in a while and listen. Maybe that means turning something off. But as you listen, listen for that voice of Jesus as he speaks to you. It may be a very simple, I love you. It may be a very complicated, here's something that I would like you to do. And whatever that is may not be something that we consider totally reasonable. But Jesus wants us to hear that. He wants us to hear all that he has to say for us and to us. And I believe, just like Peter prayed, I think Jesus wants to hear from us as well. So I invite you this week to listen for Jesus. He's talking to us. Listen and see what he has to say this week. And then may we be able to say, I can hear Jesus. I can hear him, and I know what he's saying, and I will follow just like those sheep that Jesus was talking about in the temple that day. We hear his voice, we know his voice, and we can follow. May it be a week full of hearing Jesus this week. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you that he continues to speak to us every day. We pray that you will help us hear him. Help us to know that he is speaking and help us to respond to what he says to us. He's speaking to us because he loves us. So help us to hear. And we pray all of this in his name. Amen. <laughs>